Hello guys and welcome to another episode of Classic MG Midget DIY. As you can see it's nice and sunny, warm and no rain or, or probably a single cloud. Oh no there is a cloud. Um, so yeah. Thank god it is sunny. Um, so I've managed to do some of the interior and the paintwork and the priming and sanding which has took many many weeks. Um, so I do apologise if I haven't really actually uploaded a video on, on how to do them. Um, but I will go through in this video how I've gone through to do that. Um, so I'll show you a, a couple of photos now of what I've done in the stages so it gives a clear picture and then I'm going to show you what I've done. A little spider has managed to make its home underneath um, the bumper on the front. Um, so yeah, that's going to have to go. Sorry, spider. Um, but now, some people have been saying about um, the cover um, that I'm using. Um, it's a very good cover. I'll include a link in the description below where you can buy that cover. Um, they range from about 200 to 260 quid, so 260 pounds. Um, and it's a Storm Force Deluxe uh, cover for an MG Midget. I do also have one for my Mini. Um, a Mini has recently gone to a garage to have its subframe and everything else fitted. So yes, this is probably why I've kind of delayed some of the videos and getting stuff done because I've been getting other things done and work and everything else. So, I'll show you what I've done on the car so far on the inside and I hope you enjoy. Um, I've managed to get half the roof back on. Um, I've still yet to make the holes all the way along on the um, rubber along here to get it all fitted onto the press studs and the retainer that goes on the back. Um, but that'll be an easy job when I've got my hole punch thing come. I did have one but I've lost it so I'm having to buy another one which cost me about 16 quid off eBay. Um, a little hole puncher level one so it should do the trick. Also to finish off the finishers and everything else um, so yeah I'll just take off the coat hood slightly so you can see the rest right I've just taken the hood off slightly so you can see uh, a bit more open um, and I didn't really want to risk pushing the hood down because I haven't got the rest of the connections on the back so that's why I've just tilted it forward so basically it's had a whole respray as you've seen in the photos before and all primed down um, that was a cellulose um, two pack uh, vermilion red paint um, I'll include a link in the description below as well of where I got that um, it actually took me about one litre um, of paint to do the inside so one litre of paint and just over just over a litre primer because um, I did two kinds of primer so I did a high zinc primer 
and then afterwards I did a uh, it's the make called I think it's Tetrasol uh, primer which is quite a thick base paint and the zinc primer prevents uh, further rust so the higher zinc volume that you have in the uh, primers is a lot better um, and then you have a thick primer over the top um, you didn't have to you don't have to do that if you don't wish uh, but as for for what it's worth it cost me I think about 20 quid 16 pounds 18 pounds like that for the primers and one liters so to be honest it's not a bad deal um, so yeah and I've, as you can see I've also started doing the soundproofing underneath um, this also prevents um, water getting in and leaking onto the body and it makes it waterproof so it's got a waterproof layer on the top which is the shiny bit on the top um, and then it's got the layers of the foam for the soundproofing and then it's got an adhesive back on um, some people tend to have the adhesive back so it sticks to the carpet however I believe um, it's better for it to stick to the car because the water then, if you get any damp or anything in it, it will just stay on the, on the surface and afterwards it will come through on your carpet. So, and soundproofing is only actually cost me, I believe, was 50 quid um, and it was a five, six meter roll. And I've had to cut it up in sections. You can buy them um, already cut up and proper foam ones, but I wanted to go for a bit more better quality. Um, soundproofing and stuff so it was about 50, 50 60 quid for that and then about six seven quid for the tape sealant tape go around the edges um so yeah it took me about just about a day i'd say um to do properly um i've also done some of the wiring as well uh, which i'll show you I've done some of the wiring on the front if you can see there um i've took out basically the whole wiring loom and then checked all the wires because I've seen before in other cars where they've just connected up like a little wire and another little wire so you wonder why you get short circuit um, connections and not very good connection to it so I've double checked all that and actually it was a quite good wiring so and it's quite new as well the wiring I think it did have a little tag on with your date um, I seem to have lost that as well but it was like checked by someone so to be honest, I think they did quite a good job. But in all fairness, I still ripped it all out because I'm going for the trouble of doing the whole interior first and then afterwards I'm doing it on underneath. Right, so I've also done um, the engine bay as well, uh, just around the outside of the engine bay. Um, I don't know if you can see because of the sun, but um, obviously the engine hasn't been done yet, so I've still yet to uh, degrease all of that and then paint it and then layer it up and so forth. Um, around the actual engine bay I've done that's all been sanded down and reprimed um, I didn't actually use the air compressors to do that um, I just used the spray cans which you can buy from most local shops um, Halfords is quite a good one to be honest it's quite reasonably priced I've used it for other things as well so to be honest for it would cost me about seven seven eight quid a can um, to do and then after I applied heat proof um, High, very high temperature paint to go around the outside for obvious reasons so um, I did all that I did think I'd go with the orange still um, but I was thinking I couldn't I don't think I could get a high temperature paint orange in to do that you probably could but um, we might do that later maybe in the future in the future videos or we might just leave it black um, but the engine cover thing that will be done orange same as this um, carburetors, um, they're going to be done soon. Um, they're taped up for a reason because I'm painting and sanding and didn't want to get into the channels. And the dashboard I've actually done as well, um, which I'll show you a photo of that right now. So yeah, we started doing that. Um, I've replaced the sensor on the uh, reversing for the gear thing as well. Um, it was a bit of a swine to get at, um, so it's just behind there, little sensor. I've got to wire that up uh, throughout there. And the handbrake's going to be changed anyway. I know it's just painted orange. I did just over spray it because, to be honest, I'm going to take it off and have it all done. So, um, and also I've managed to actually. Uh, 
I can't actually move the car because the back brakes have seized. So I'll have to sort that out as well when it comes to moving it. Um, but I'll probably replace all the bike brakes anyway, front and back. So we might do a video on that. Um, so yeah, Project Charlie is coming quite well. Uh, non plate missing because I've just basically thrown it in the wet, thrown it in the bin because it's no use. And it's cracked. Um, so I hope to have this car, and uh, I've been told the interior will be done about mid July, uh, 2018. So hopefully around about then I'll show you a video installing the interior, uh, which the dashboard will be done. Uh, just to tell you what I'm going for for the interior. Um, the door cars are going to be the same, same style stitching. Um, but where the lines go up to the top of, I'll just quickly show you. So you see where the uh, door handle actually is at the top. Uh, there's normally like three or four lines there and then two at the bottom. That's going to be like a tan, um, a, cre a cream tan colour. And then the seat, the interior is going to be cream as well. Um, a magnolia cream. I've also got the uh, magnolia clocks um, on order. Um, all of them have come but I'm still waiting for the speedo thing and I've got to go and collect that so we might do a video on going and collect them. So yeah, we'll see you from there and I'll show you how, how they all fit. Make sure everything works before I put all the rest of the interior in. Um, but the next video might be a uh, fitting of the carpet because that's planned to be coming uh, just before the end of this May 2018. So around about end of May, start of June, we might start putting them in. And I'll do a little video of that as well because I know I've actually skipped on doing a video doing soundproofing and paint and primer. But because of the weather and I've been in and out, in and out, in and out. So obviously I haven't had much time to do that. It's like a one coat. So you just go over the one coat and that's why I'll include the link in the description below where you can buy it. It cost me, I think it was about 24, 25 quid for the litre of paint of the orange, of Vermilion Red. Um, and it's a perfect colour match. Exactly perfect. And I actually did buy it off eBay. Yeah. But the finish and, you know, as you can see, you know, is, is, is a complete match to the car. And it's done really, really well with that. Um, so, yeah, I'll just show you the spray gun that I've been using because obviously I've used the air compressor to do all this um, because what I ended up doing was losing my spray gun um, which the one on the top you got on uh, I ended up losing that and then actually I actually found it somewhere in the shed so as you can see I find stuff lose it find stuff lose it and keep buying it and losing it and whatever but we get there in the end but I used a like, base coat uh, spray gun which I'll show you now um, and that's perfectly good and it's highly recommended. It cost me about 35 quid from my local um, country store. So, so that was the uh, base coat spray gun I've been using um, through an air compressor. Um, easy to clean and also the paint inside it never ever sticks to the inner side unlike you get with the ones with the plastic on the top. Um, so the ones on the top are always actually a mess and a pain to do. This one's dead easy. It's literally just pull the pressure thing out, pull it out, and then it's in there. Now I still do have some primer in there, and that's been in there for over a week. So obviously I should clean it out, um, but it's not going to do much harm in the paint gun. And I've got the heads. It's dead easy to do. Um, I use standard thinners as well. Um, when I was applying the zinc for the for the base of it, um, I mixed that with a one one percent uh, thinners, standard thinners, and that was just to finish it out and give it a more finish. Then after use a thick primer on the top, sand it down a little bit, go over with the uh, paint. I uh, sell use two pack paint and the colour I brought, um, and then that was it. It finished, and that's the finishing touch. And it doesn't need a second coat either. It's a glossy finish. It's a thick base kick paint as well. No thin is required. You can thin it um, if you want, if you wish, um, but I didn't thin it on this occasion. And the finish on it is brilliant. So and it's a great colour match. But when I was doing the floor as well, I was using a, using a flap flap disc on an iron grinder. But I was doing it to sheet metal, as you've seen in the other photos before. 
um, and then filled all the gaps to make it all f smooth and flat and it's gone really well um, it is kind of a bit of a shame I don't show you um, fitting it and doing it and everything else but next couple of things is to do the interior whilst I waited for my interior I'm going to start doing my engine bay so there'll be a couple of things on the engine that I'll be doing and I'll start doing a couple of videos more on them um, hopefully this video um, is just a little guide of what I've done and what paints is best to use um, but like I say I'll include a link in the description below where, you got, where I got the paints and primers and because it's reasonably priced and it's a great finish and it was easy to apply um, and very easy to do um, I've only ever sprayed the car inside before not in this car but in my Mini um, and that was with a, basically a spray can now to be honest I kind of wish I did it with a spray, a spray gun with air compressor um, just so you know when you're setting up your spray gun as well I like to set mine at 6 bars obviously when you're using a spray gun as well make sure you have a proper mask not just a dust mask because they do not serve any purpose whatsoever so in the safety when you're applying paints especially primers and especially cellulose two pack paints um, because they are very very toxic uh, the primers tend to be more toxic than cellulose to be honest um, because on the percentages and whatever has been used I'll show you a picture of it now of what I brought um, and what I used And you have to buy the masks and, and stuff to go on on the filters and stuff. So it's a reusable mask, and you just buy the filters on the end. A proper respirator, and um, that's what you have to have for this job to do the inside. Don't buy a dust mask and just do it, or just don't do it without a mask. If you do it without a mask and do it with a dust mask, it is no point in even starting it. Um, I know that the masks uh, they cost me about I think about twenty three, twenty four pounds something like that for the mask. And the filters, like for two filters, I think it cost me like 18 quid. Now, those filters, they always say they're disposable and you know, and everything else. Obviously, obviously, they are disposable at some point. Um, but to be honest, if you've used it once, you don't have to throw them away. Now, what I tend to do with the filters as a whole is use the until they start actually getting dirt in it and it's blocked up and you can see paint particles on the outside in, in the, the on the filters then you can start to throw them away um, you can use it if, if you're just doing a little job you could probably get away with it and do it, with it. Uh, but you don't have to keep buying new filters for everything to do them because um, they are quite expensive but like I say health and safety comes first so make sure you do that first um, the frame I might tidy off with a black um, hammerite paint um, because hammerite stuff and paint is quite good was a bit of a pain fitting it. Now, when you come to fit it, um, little brackets sit on the end and then the gaskets and everything else. I suggest if you you will need to, it's like if you can you can do it on your own. I've managed to do this on my own, uh, but it is useful if you get somebody to help you. Uh, but if you clip them in first, yeah, once you've got one or, one or two bolt, one bolt each side in. And then afterwards, clip this in so it's level and straight. Then you can start to bend this out a bit, and then put your second bolt in because the thing inside moves. The mechanism does, so it's easier to tighten up. And then after, I just tighten up with a ratchet. And then after, you can go with an impact gun and just tighten it up even more to the torque um, and so forth. But that's what I've done. Also, I've actually managed to uh, cut off and get rid of that steering um, steering lock and ignition. Um, because the inside of it actually snaps, so it just goes to the red wire to the ignition to start it. Um, obviously, I have just a, a bit of a cheap um, ignition one that I had fitted before, and because that one actually snaps inside. So, but it took some getting off. Right. But what I did, um, some people t say you can just drill them out because what happens is they cut the uh, bolts that go on the top bolts off the top so it's secure obviously for security so nobody nicks your car um, but I'll show you a couple of the photos of what a mad person on an angle grinder can actually do with cutting it off um, but when you come to do it if you drop the steering thing a little bit be careful how you pull it how far you pull this out because you can end up pulling it out on the other end and then it's a bit of a nightmare to get back in and also getting it aligned and everything else. Um, but if you just undo the top 
two mounting nuts and then just drop it slightly. It gives you more room to access. You can pull it all the way out if you wish. Um, but it depends what you want to do. But on this occasion, what I did was I cut this side out and then cut that side out. And then afterwards, um, I asked a couple of people on Facebook on putting it in and how to get it off and stuff. Uh, some people say you just drill them out or whatever you can do, but I didn't want to, I couldn't really get a drill in, I didn't really want to take the steering column out. Uh, so I got the angle grinder out and cut on the sides to try and cut through the bolts. Um, and then afterwards, once I've made a gap, cut again uh, so it's a different level, so you've got a space where you can put a chisel. And then basically, if you just get a chisel and just put it there and then just whack it a few times with a hammer, it will just snap off. And then afterwards, you can just pull it out. Dead easy. Um, I was thinking, I'm never going to get this thing off because. I think it's a dead silly place to put it as well because when you're in the car, and I'm six foot two, yeah, and you're always in, and then you, when you come to get it in and out, you get in and out all the time, and then you, you end up knocking the key with your leg, or whatever. So I'm gonna end up probably putting the ignition key somewhere here, um, maybe. So it'd probably be a lot better to do it like that. Um, but yeah, it's coming on quite good now. Uh, the door handles. Um, on the outside of the car, um, they've come off because my parents are they wanted the springs because the garage lost them, and then actually, we actually found them in the end. Um, we actually realized we had them, so I had to take all of my handles off and put them through. And I've got to redo that today, maybe tomorrow. Um, um, can only spend so much money on this month and a couple of months later because of a mini as well. The mini's costing me just over two grand in parts um, and it's gonna probably going to cost me one thousand a good thousand pound in labor to fit it all and everything else and the wheel arches so yes there's a reason why I've done stages of this quicker than that and and stuff um, but yeah also uh, Project Bernard if you haven't checked him out on YouTube on the uh, YouTube channel playlist of mine um, he will be coming on to classic MG Midget DIY with the wiring and everything else because and the interior because also we're going to do the interior for that so you know you've missed out on this uh, we will show you uh, on spraying it up, grinding it all down